Coming up this half hour, season canceled. We'll have an update on the Helena Farmers Market. Plus, we'll hear from teachers who have started and ended their careers during coronavirus. And later, revitalizing history will take you to a barn getting a facelift in Sun River. Montana This Morning starts now. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us here on this Thursday. I'm Shannon Newt. And I'm Jason Laird. Big birthday girl here today. Birthday What are you, what are you like, 25 now? Yes. Yeah, we'll just go with that. Again. I almost got you. So I was trying to find a card, obviously, and there was one that said, like, happy 30th birthday happy 30th birthday for like the third time or third wow. year in a row or something. I Rude. was going to, what? I just, <laughs> I, I saw it. And I was like, that makes sense. You know, be a good one. Is Anyways, that what you got? no, I did not get that <laughs> one. Jeez. Okay. Let's roll the weather here. This is getting awkward. Shannon's not playing along. It's fine. Anyways, birthday card. currently in Great Falls, we're looking at 58 <laughs> degrees. Humidity is sitting at 60% at this hour. Wind of the south at about three miles per hour as well as for the capital right now. Uh, evidently, I got that routed wrong. Have to check Good that. Uh, <laughs> not, not sure how that happened. Anyways, temperatures <laughs> looking at the uh, low 90s here today. So again, we are tracking some pretty high fire variables. Now today, thankfully, we're not dealing with a lot of dry air or wind. Tomorrow is going to be a different story. I'll show you that momentarily today. Again, low 90s uh, increase in some rain moving through the area with a couple of uh, shots of thunder and lightning there in the mix as well. So weather headlines here, cold front that's going to kick off some isolated thunderstorms here today. More wind and a heightened fire danger on Friday. We'll tell you more about that extended forecast shortly. Shannon. Jason, thank you. Time now is 501 and we're checking Montana's COVID-19 numbers. The state reported 115 new cases since Tuesday. Phillips County has seen its first cases of coronavirus with five, meaning masks are now mandatory there. There has also been another COVID related death in Yellowstone County, bringing the statewide death toll to 66. And there are currently more than 1500 active cases and 79 Montanans are hospitalized. Nearly 2900 people have recovered so far. The Helena Farmers Market has officially canceled its season. Following the revocation of the market's COVID-19 prevention plan and street permit, the market's board and Lewis and Clark Public Health tried to find a way to keep the market still running while still abiding by the county's guidelines. Helena Farmers Market Board President Wayne O'Brien said the organization just didn't feel like they had the ability to carry out the plan under the guidelines. When we finally, I think, got to a point where we thought we could put something together that would work, we realized that we just did not have the manpower or the capability and real difficult for us to deal with trying to have a farmer's market where you're limited to 250 people for the entire day that you hold the market. It just didn't seem feasible for us at that stage of the game to move forward. Lewis and Clark Public Health called the decision to cancel the market heartbreaking. In a statement, they said, quote, we had hoped for an amended plan that would allow community members access to the wonderful local products our vendors have to offer in a safe environment protective from the virus that causes COVID-19, end quote. During the first few weeks of the pandemic, the Salvation Army of Great Falls was helping their weekly quota of households in a single day. Now that unemployment benefits have been cut, the Salvation Army expects general need to surge once again. This increase means the nonprofit will depend on the community even more over the next few months as they work to meet the struggling uh, the needs of struggling community members. Monetary donations, food drop offs and time spent volunteering can help the Salvation Army help others. Corps Officer Monica King explains that while the organization expects needs to increase, the staff hasn't had time to prepare for the expected demand in supplies and resources. We really haven't been able to prepare ahead, really. It's just um, it, we will continue to provide the services we've always provided until uh, those resources run dry, basically. As the Salvation Army gears up for another busy season, they ask that the community keep their needs in mind. If you'd like to donate or are in need of aid, you can find more information on our website. Great Falls Public Schools is ramping up for an unprecedented fall semester. Despite coronavirus, 51 new teachers are slated to start this fall in the district. MTN's Zach Shermley checked in with a few to see how they're feeling. 
The clock is ticking for the start of the school year here in the Electric City, with teachers still reeling from the fallout of last spring's online-only semester. And last year, there was nothing really I could contribute once they called off school. Paul Jefferson, an in-school suspension tutor at Great Falls High, resigned ahead of the upcoming school year. So much of what I do is my um, connections with the kids, and none of that was going to be possible. I have been teaching at Great Falls High for 31 years, and now it's a pandemic. Also last semester, retirements from longtime Great Falls High teachers Christina Thiel and Jan Mater. 43 years ago, I came to Great Falls. Despite the pandemic, district officials tell MTN the turnover is largely on par with any other year. This year's passing of the torch comes with much more uncertainty, especially for special education teachers like Holly Johnson, who will be at Valley View Elementary this fall. It's an unsure time. Um, we're all going through unsure times with this whole pandemic. As a special ed teacher, um, our classrooms look a lot different. 22 teachers retired from the Great Falls Public School District last semester, passing the baton to Holly here at Valley View Elementary, along with 50 other new hires for the district. Despite the uncertainty, many new educators tell me they have no other choice but to remain optimistic. All of us are doing the best we can. <laughs> so we'll keep things clean and sanitized to keep everybody healthy and especially as health enhancement, that's, that's our goal. Health enhancement teacher Molly Harding says she's thankful for the level of communication from the district. GFPS has done a really awesome job with preparing us for everything and they've been so great about telling us information and making us feel like we're included in everything. In July, the district released a draft plan for a mix of face-to-face -face and remote instruction in the fall, with protections for immunocompromised students and staff members. Regardless of what next school year brings, Holly says she and her students are in this together. Honestly, the thing that gets me to the next day and that makes my attitude still positive is that just being with my students, just having that one-to-one um, -one, um, contact with my students is what is keeping me going. In Great Falls, Zach Shermley, MTN News. With the added threat of coronavirus, health officials are pushing Americans to get their flu shot earlier this year. Flu shots will start being available at doctor's offices, pharmacies, and supermarkets by early next month. Health experts also say it's a good idea to get it early because there may be added obstacles this year. People who usually get the shot at the office may be working from home, and those who get it from the doctor may have a longer wait time for an appointment. It's 507 here on your Thursday coming up on Montana this morning. Holding on to hope will share one family's fight for life. And later in your weather forecast, it's about the last day of high pressure for at least a little while. This area of low pressure is going to move in. That is going to kick off some storms here this morning and especially this afternoon and offer up quite a bit cooler temperatures as we head through the weekend. We'll take a little bit closer look at this incoming weather pattern coming up very shortly in the show. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Good morning. Welcome back. It is Thursday, August 6th. You're looking live out over the capital city this morning. Time now is 510. Welcome back. Well, Ty McDonald has been known as a tough Montana State football player and cowboy growing up on a ranch in the Geyser area. But he says he doesn't come close to as strong as his baby boy fighting for his life in Denver as we speak. MTN's Jenny Fick shares the story of Liam McDonald. Mylan, oh my goodness. This is Liam. You're having a good day. Liam translates to strong-willed warrior, and it turns out that couldn't be more true. He was born with a serious heart defect and underwent his first open heart surgery at five days old. Three open heart surgeries, two other surgeries, cath lab procedures that all require anesthesia and to still be able to smile at his mom and dad is pretty darn cool. His eyes just tell a story and he looks at you and it just like hits your soul. Following his second stage of heart surgery in March, he was put on ECMO or life support. The doctors have said that there's no more that can be done for him, but his parents have not and will not give up hope. Not every institution does specialize in pediatrics. I mean, you're, you're talking about a heart that's, you know, when he was born, it was the size of a walnut. Sometimes a different perspective helps. Ty made a post on Facebook, reaching out for a miracle. At this point, the post has been shared around 16,000 times. Our need is to get our information out to uh, cardiology, expertise folks who are in those fields 
uh, all across the country. A cardiac surgeon, a heart transplant team, a kidney transplant team, a pediatric surgeon. You will need a heart transplant and down the road, a kidney transplant. But before any of that can happen, they have to get on the transplant list. This whole thing would be one thing if he wasn't there neurologically, if you know he didn't respond to us every day, but he does every day and he smiles at us every day. In my eyes, you have one choice, and that choice is to continue to grind. There's only one way to eat an elephant, and it's one bite at a time. I think every parent has a gut feeling on how their kid is doing or not, especially mama. Uh, mama knows he's still fighting, and he's fighting for us, and he's fighting for his sister. In short, he's the toughest cowboy I know. Someone that has the big guns that can offer him a life, because he's so full of life, and giving up on him is just... It's not a choice. It's not an option. We won't do it. Did you ever know you could love someone so much? I didn't until I had Kimber. You kind of get that, oh my God, I didn't know. And then you have him and it's like, just the thought of losing him just tears you apart. Like you do anything like I'd give him my heart if it would fit in his chest. Mm -hmm. If they will give him a heart, I will give him a kidney. I'm the best match for him and I will give one to him if they will give him a heart. Jenny Fick for MTN News. And Liam just turned eight months old. Pounds and fun <laughs> stuff evidently here. Uh, Great Falls yesterday we pegged out at 93. Toasty one, couple degrees over what I was anticipating. 85 would be the average. Today's temperature trend, it's going to be another hot one today. We will have a couple of storms in the mix as well. 92 yesterday in the capital. Your average would be 88 today. Again, it is going to be another hot one, taking a little bit longer to warm up today due to those storms. I'll tell you about them next. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Jason Laird. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully your day's off to a great start, sitting at 60 degrees in Great Falls, 59 in the capital, northeastern Montana. Looking at the low 60s as well, you'll notice that first round of moisture that's going to be moving into the region here this morning. Uh, that's going to kick off a couple showers, thunderstorms, first half of the day, stronger storms as the day plays out. But despite the passing storms, we're still going to hit 91 degrees in Great Falls, 88 in the capital, mid 90s to high 90s throughout the eastern plains. Very, very hot one there. So as for the severe storm, potential. Most of those are going to be this afternoon, but we are going to be looking at some stronger storms today. Again, this is put out by the National Weather Service, kind of anticipating where some of those stronger storms are going to be. So breaking down your day step by step here. Okay, we're going to start out bright and early. We've actually got a little batch of warmer air in front of that cold front. That's going to create just enough instability, very similar to Monday to kind of kick off some isolated showers and thunderstorms for the first portion of the day. Then as the day plays out. We're going to start to have some colder air making its way into the state here this evening along the leading edge of that cold front. We're going to see some stronger isolated showers and thunderstorms. This particular system is going to be the one that's going to be more likely to produce, you know, maybe some small to moderate hail, heavy rain at times. Really the biggest impact with the passing storms today are going to be thunderstorm related wind gusts. In other words, you get a uh, thunderstorm cell and then the wind coming out of those thunderstorms very, very strong and then following that much cooler temperatures. Overnight lows are going to fall into the low to mid 40s for a good chunk of the state. Mid 40s down into southwestern Montana, staying more mild as that cold air continues to track into the eastern plains overnight tonight. So tomorrow, where things are going to take a little bit of a change for us is it's going to be a lot cooler, but what's also going to happen is the wind is going to kick up. So although the temperatures aren't going to be a factor tomorrow, the wind is really going to play into the fire danger. So in anticipation of that, National Weather Service putting out a fire weather watch. That's going to take us through Friday till about 9 p.m. As for the variables that we're working with tomorrow, again, temperatures not a huge factor. Low 80s, maybe even a couple of 70s, but we got dry air to work with, a lot of wind, and then of course dry vegetation out there. So even without the temperatures, if a fire was to kick off, it could spread very rapidly. 79 degrees tomorrow in Great Falls, big difference there. 80 in the capital, still holding on to a couple of mid 80s there throughout the eastern plains. Then on Saturday, a little tiny bit warmer, but staying more mild, touching into a couple of 90s there throughout the eastern plains as we head a little bit further in advance again. 
again on Saturday. That cooler air is going to continue to filter in across the state. It does look like we're going to see some weak high pressure rebuild next week. That's going to bump temperatures probably by Tuesday, Wednesday back into the high 80s. So 91 today, scattered showers and thunderstorms both in the morning, more into the late afternoon and evening, cool through the weekend and getting a little bit more average next week. 88 degrees in the capital today. Then we're looking at the low 80s through the weekend. Still sunny and clear and likely a little bit hotter again by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. Shannon. Jason, thank you. A barn in Sun River is getting a facelift, but it's not just any barn. MTN's Isaiah Dunk takes us there. The J.C. Adams Stone Barn has been a staple in the Sun River Valley for quite a while. Local rancher J.C. Adams had it completed in 1885, so it's actually older than the state of Montana. With its large size and Romanesque revival architecture, it's said to be the only barn of its kind west of the Mississippi River. He built the barn mainly to provide horses and cattle to Fort Shaw, which was going strong at that point in time. He came from Kentucky. Uh, that's part of the reason why he built such a beautiful big old barn. I noticed the barn almost the first time I drove by it. It just jumps out at you. The barn fell out of private use in 1979, and it's been registered as a national historic place since then. Over the last four decades, it's seen numerous restoration efforts, and this week, the most recent one is finishing up. A $10,000 grant from the Montana History Foundation has helped with new red paint for all the wooden surfaces, plus restored window panes and other work. It's been wonderful, actually. Um, overwhelming in the sense that, you know, planning the the weather, the subcontractors, the supplies, everything's kind of late coming in, but it all came together, so it went really smooth, actually. And in its heyday, the barn even held roller skate parties and dances for Valley locals up in the hayloft. Its unique size, location, and style make it worth every effort. The alternative is it not being here any longer, and, you know, as it deteriorates, it's just kind of an eyesore, so, um, you know, raising the money to make this happen and or getting a grant to do it is just so important for everybody in, in this area as well as the families that live here. Neat history and a lot of fun memories for everybody. In Sun River, Isaiah Dunk, MTN News. It's 522 now on your Thursday morning. Still to come on Montana this morning, a reason to clown around with us. We'll be right back. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Welcome back. It is 524, so... Could maybe it be any a, creepier? Maybe a warning for you if you're scared of clowns. I know, right? Look Thank, away. Good job, Shannon. Look away. <laughs> Everybody's just, you know, slowly but surely well, waking up. Like and just like a then, circus ah, so far. Those aren't... Those are... Yeah, performers. That's I don't mind clown. the clowns. Those don't look like clowns. Those aren't clowns. I think this is just circus video. Okay, anyway, well, this is awful clown related video. There's one. There's anyway, one. it's That's International Clown one. Week. They get a whole oh, week dear. apparently. So okay. love them or run for them. Clowns have been entertaining folks for centuries. Yeah, the uh, first clowns date back to ancient Europe. No, Egypt. The, oh, Egypt, Egypt. I'm sorry, Egypt, ancient Egypt. These days, most of them perform as part of the circus or at of course, kids' birthday parties if they're not scared of them. Uh, one oh, survey gosh, found nearly 8% of Americans are afraid of clowns. I'm actually surprised that it's not Those a higher clowns percentage. Those are very creepy. Like, the more friendly-looking ones aren't as bad. Yeah. What do you... Are you scared of clowns? No, not really. I mean, I, those ones are a little... Dis, not... That's just pop video. Hold on. Those wait, just, wait. You'll see it here momentarily. Circuit. If this so loops again... It's like again. intense circus video. Yeah, hold on. Th that that's cre that's that creepy. That one's creepy. That one's creepy. Yeah. But the more like friendly, like, you know, like the uh, clowns you'll see at like the local circuses and stuff, those aren't bad. Yeah. Have you seen They're it? They're fine. Yes. What do you think of it? Uh, Pennywise, right? Is that the name? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched it. I don't, I mean, I I don't like horror no, and scary it really, movies, so no, I don't I've seen watch that. it. Uh, it didn't yeah. really bother me. I mean, the, the 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 thing that got me with that is like just the like shock scenes, you know, where you're like not really paying attention. Then, ah, you know. you got to watch out for those. I know, yeah. but but no, yeah, clowns aren't aren't a big. Did you, did you get ever... me a whole like clown circus for my birthday? Not at all. Not at all. Could you imagine your That's dog? Good. How scared he would be? Like he's scared of everything he's already. Scared like, of everything. Could you imagine throwing a clown would, into the mix? Yeah, it depends how aggressive. But he would definitely give them like a weird side eye because he oh, yeah. would not know what was happening. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. It, him definitely and me both actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was trying yeah. to think because you're you're not necessarily scared of clowns. What are those things? Uh, why am I mascots? Drawing? Mascots. 
Shannon does not like mascots. Costumed things. Yeah, I did no. get you a mascot for your birthday. What kind? I don't know. I hmm. didn't get a mascot for her birthday. I wasn't, I wasn't the blue pony in high school, Haver High School. What did it look I was like? A it did it have one like of those a like horse heads? That was blue. Those creepy ones uh -huh. that everybody has yeah. nowadays? Well, the big one. It was the whole full costume. Oh. I was a cheerleader, though. I was not scared of that because I knew who was inside of the costume. That was not so scary. So that's to what me. intimidates you? Is you I think don't know so. I can't the see the face. Yeah. Uh, don't use that against me. Oh, totally going to use that against you. Halloween is just around the corner. Can't wait. Mm. It'll be great. Should have never, never said anything. <laughs> Anywho, on the weather scene here this morning, not a bad start to your day. Uh, looking out across the uh, the state here, Helena there on the Opportunity Bank ICAM, Great Falls there up in the right-hand corner. Uh, starting to see a little bit of light there in Browning as well. Okay, we do have a storm potential here today. Nothing crazy, but stronger thunderstorms likely. Uh, strong wind and then a little bit of hail associated with those storms. Some of these storms are going to kind of have those little heavy downpours with them here today, too. So keep that in mind. So again, wind is the biggest threat. Hail, not too bad. And flooding's kind of starting to touch into the moderate to high stage there as well, just because some of these storms are going to have those real quick downpours that, you know, it's not a lot of rain. It just soaks things for a short amount of time. 91 in Great Falls, 88 in the capital. Scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the area today. Well, Kroger has a new way to recycle its products, and ExxonMobil may suspend its employee retirement plan match to save money. Yeah, Jane King is in New York with those stories and more. ExxonMobil warned that low energy prices may wipe as much as a fifth of its oil and natural gas reserves off the books. If depressed prices persist for the rest of the year, certain quantities of crude oil and natural gas will not qualify as proved reserves at the end of the year. Reuters reports that ExxonMobil told employees it would begin suspending the employer match to the retirement savings plan beginning in October as well. Well, Tesla CEO Elon Musk says his electric car company's headquarters will stay in California for the short term. But the automaker may move to another state in the future, he says. Now, he indicated in May there was a chance that he would be moving the headquarters away from California following the state's response to the pandemic. The company has a plant near Reno, Nevada, and just announced a new plant in Texas. Well, Kroger has launched a program that enables customers to recycle packaging for hundreds of its simple truth products that aren't typically accepted at curbside programs. So customers can recycle the packaging of more than 300 of the simple truth natural and organic brand products at no cost. Customers participate by first signing up at TerraCycle.com backslash simple truth and GE will harness the power of one of the world's fastest supercomputers to propel offshore wind power development in the U.S. Now, ultimately, this IBM supercomputer would influence the design, control, and operations of future wind turbines. It's also intended to advance the growth of wind power off the coast of the U.S. From New York, I'm Jane King with your Ag and Energy Report. You Coming up this half hour, we'll look at some projects moving forward in downtown Great Falls. Plus, the census announces it's wrapping up counting efforts early, what this could mean for Montana. And later, scammers are taking up texting, the newest thing to watch out for. Montana This Morning starts now. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Thursday, August 6th. I'm Shannon New. I'm Jason Lair, big birthday girl here today. I birthday. was thinking uh, we should start a task force against scammers. Oh, I thought this had to, something to do with birthdays. No, yeah. not at all. I, I squirreled out and went off on a tangent here, but no, well, like yeah, legitimately. Scammers are the worst. Oh, yeah. Scammers are awful. The worst. I my have favorite, been getting some of those My favorite thing in the texts. world, though, is when I get the scam phone calls is yeah. I stay on the phone with them as long as humanly possible. He's trying to save other Just to, people yeah, from having to yeah, talk to them. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think what my record time is. Probably about an hour and a half. Which is just crazy that you want to... <laughs> Stayed on the yeah. phone for an hour and a half with one of these I people. did, yeah. Yeah, it was wow. it was one of the Microsoft scams, you know, trying because your key has expired or whatever. Oh. And I had the guy convinced that my outlet was on fire. And Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, it was quite an ordeal. Wow. But I kept him on the phone for an hour and a half so he couldn't, kept you know, try to scam somebody else. Yeah. Until he found out what I was doing, then he was very upset. Well, oh, well. shouldn't have done it in the first yeah, exactly. place. Exactly. That's the way I look at it. 58 degrees in Great Falls right now. 
Opportunity Bank ICAM in the capital sitting at 59 humidity at about 60% here this morning. Tiny, tiny bit of a breeze. Today's UV index not quite as high, looking at about a rating of seven. So burn time about 30 minutes. Still going to be a hot one though. And as we glance into the weekend here, looking at Saturday, low 80s, actually looking at the high 70s on Sunday. So a rather cool one. We'll take a closer look at this incoming cool system that's going to drop those temperatures a little bit. Detailed forecast coming up shortly. Shannon. Jason, thank you. Development might be stagnant for some areas during COVID-19, but the future is bright. MTN's Tom Wiley has more on some projects that are moving forward and what they mean for downtown Great Falls growth. Though the global pandemic has led to an economic downturn, there was reason for optimism at Tuesday night's city commission meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. And a thank you on behalf of the city of Great Falls for the risk takers that are in the audience tonight. The commissioners unanimously approved tax abatements for three local projects currently in development. I really believe in tax abatements. It's an investment in Great Falls growth. And I think we're really sending a good message that the city will participate with growth even during times like this. The first is a proposed complex attached to the Milwaukee station that would add 83 market rate apartments, a wine bar, a food court with four to five restaurants and a possible gym. The second is a project called the Northern Lofts, which would renovate the second and third floor of the 412 Central Avenue building above the Mighty Mo Brewery into 18 one and two bedroom apartments. And the third is a multi-purpose entertainment venue with a large stage, a bar and lounge and a capacity of 700 occupants going into the vacant units next to Central Avenue meets. All these projects are in various stages of planning with plenty of hurdles to clear before they become a reality. With the first hurdle is out of the way with city supports and that goes well for the future of Great Falls development. We've been working on downtown revitalization for a number of years now and these three projects are really the fruition of years of effort to attract high quality private investment. These projects are, are very important for the future of downtown, but they also demonstrate private investor confidence in, in the future of Great Falls and the entire economy of the Golden Triangle. Tom Wiley, MTN News. Checking Montana's COVID-19 numbers this morning. The state reported 115 new cases since Tuesday. Phillips County has seen its first cases of coronavirus with five, meaning masks are now mandatory in that county. There have also been another there has also been another COVID related death in Yellowstone County. That brings the statewide total of deaths to 66. There are currently more than 1500 active cases. 79 Montanans are hospitalized. Nearly 2,900 people have recovered so far. Earlier this week, the U.S. Census Bureau announced it will stop its counting efforts for the 2020 census on September 30th. That's a month earlier than originally planned. As MTN's Mike Dennison explains, thousands of Montanans are likely to go uncounted, and state officials are asking the feds to reconsider the deadline. As of this week, only 56% of Montana households had responded to the 2020 census, one of the lowest response rates in the nation. Montana has a plan to reach those who haven't replied, but that plan was based on an October 31st deadline. If that deadline is sooner, state officials are worried Montana's count will be inaccurately low, and that means federal aid and other benefits will be cut short for the next decade. It is very important. Uh, that we get an accurate count because if we don't get an accurate count that just means those dollars aren't going to come here and it's going to go someplace else to some other state. The Census Bureau announced Monday it's stopping the count on September 30th so it can meet a December 31st deadline for getting the numbers compiled. Both of Montana's U.S. Senators and Governor Bullock have demanded that the Bureau reverse its decision. Montana also had hoped to gain a new congressional seat next year because of its population growth the past 10 years. But if the count is incomplete, officials say that gain is unlikely. Cooney, who chairs the state Complete Count Committee, says the census doesn't mail notices to post office boxes or rural route addresses. That's as many as 25% of Montanans. But the coronavirus pandemic has restricted other efforts to reach those who didn't get a mailed notice. The state hired several groups to conduct outreach, but they expected to have more time. And if people don't contact the census by the deadline, they're not counted. Huh? It's just that simple. We just, they don't exist in the eyes of the census. It means that, you know, if one person is not counted, 
Montana loses about $20,000 over a 10 year period. And when you start adding that up, so if it's 10 people, 20 people, 100 people, 1,000 people who don't get counted, starts to add up to be real money for the state of Montana. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. This morning, people in Great Falls looking for work can apply for jobs without getting out of a vehicle. Express Employment Professionals is hosting a drive through job fair. The agency is looking to fill over 30 full and part-time jobs for companies in Great Falls. Wages range from $12 to $25 an hour. The drive through job fair is today from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the parking lot of Express Employment Professionals. More people say they're getting scam texts instead of phone calls. In one scheme, the text says your payment, no specifics, was unsuccessful and to call a number. Experts say you shouldn't reply and shouldn't call the number. Instead, check your bank account and check for any payments you've made. Then forward the text in question to your carrier. Another scam text says you've got unclaimed money coming your way. The sender claims to be from the Unclaimed Property Administration. Unfortunately, it's probably all made up. Experts say not to click any links. States have official government sites where you can search your name for any unclaimed property. It's 538 now coming up on Montana this morning. It's peak season for a popular summer treat. We'll check in on Flathead Cherries. And later in your weather forecast today, the fire danger as I lose my voice here. <laughs> today, today in the weather forecast, not much going on tomorrow though. Increase in the fire danger, especially in north central Montana. We're going to be tracking out that system and let you know kind of what's causing the increase in the fire danger on Friday. More on your detailed forecast is coming up shortly. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Good morning. Thanks for making us a part of your day. We appreciate that. It is Thursday, August 6th. You're looking live over Great Falls. This morning time now is 541. Welcome back. Popular Flathead Lake cherries are currently in peak harvest, being sold locally in grocery stores while also being shipped across the world. MTN Sean Wells has an update on one of Montana's sweetest summertime exports in this morning's Montana Ag Network report. I think a lot of the market this year is domestic because there's just a big demand for cherries, but there's overseas markets, a lot of, a lot of Northwest cherries, which we are considered part of, are sold in Asia and Europe and um, yeah, all over the world. Munson Fruit Field representative Brian Campbell expects roughly 1.2 million pounds of Flathead Lake cherries to be harvested this season. The Cherry Grower Cooperative manages 80 Flathead orchards, roughly 500 acres of cherries. Campbell says the crop is roughly 60% of last year's haul, which brought in 2 million pounds. Despite the low crop outlook, Campbell says this year's fruit is in excellent condition. Campbell says long summer days and cool nights, along with a smaller than normal crop, seem to be the perfect recipe for this season's cherries. With smaller volumes, we're able to time our picking a little bit better, and so we're getting, you know, picking it right at its prime. We don't have to rush and try to get a bigger crop off. Flathead Lake Cherry Farmer and Co-op Board Member Mark St. Sauber says orchards are taking extra precautions this season due to the coronavirus pandemic. Free testing sites have been set up for cherry workers along with social distancing protocols. We've been taking their temperature every morning and asking them if they are, you know, having any of the symptoms of the coronavirus. Um, so far, we've had no issues. The Flathead Lake Cherry Growers Warehouse on Finley Point is where Monson Fruit Company receives the cherries and hydrocools the fruit down to 34 degrees. The fruit is then stored in a cooler before it is shipped out within hours to their packing facility in Sela, Washington. Campbell says one perk on the job is being the official cherry taste tester, helping determine when cherries are ready to be picked. I don't know how many I eat in a day, but that's a good indication of their ripeness and their quality is that taste test. So I taste a lot of cherries. Campbell said harvest started on July 25th and is expected to run through August 12th. In Pulse and Sean Wells, MTN News. Dozens of salmonella cases have popped up across Montana. 16 counties are reporting cases, including Cascade, Hill, Fergus, and Lewis and Clark. It's linked to recalled onions. The onions are from Thompson International out of California. The company issued a voluntary recall on August 1st because they may be contaminated with salmonella. The Department of Public Health and Human Services says, quote, if you can't tell where your onions are from, 
throw them away, end quote. Most people with a salmonella infection start feeling sick about six hours to six days after eating or drinking something that contains the bacteria and typically recover without needing treatment within four to seven days. Well, I'm next in your weather forecast. <clears throat> Man, really having trouble today. Something we're not worried about, uh, air quality looking good all across the state here today. Uh, really no smoke to speak of. We do have a couple new burn restrictions, though, to tell you about into western Montana. Uh, just local burn bans in that area. Stage one down into south central Montana. Just something to keep in mind if you're going to go out camping or hiking, anything like that here this weekend. Your detailed forecast talking about a pretty significant cool down this weekend. That's coming up next. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Jason Laird. Thanks for spending your Thursday morning with us. Shannon's birthday today, so let's all wish her a big happy birthday, right? 60 degrees right now in Great Falls, 59 in the capital. Already seeing kind of that first batch of moisture making its way through southwestern Montana. That's going to continue to kind of move through central Montana the first half of the day, then some stronger storms later today. But despite some of those passing storms, we're still going to hit 88 in the capital, 91 in Great Falls, looking at the mid 90s to high 90s throughout the eastern plains there. And with these passing storms, storms, especially this afternoon. Some stronger ones are on tap. We're going to be looking at stronger storms. The biggest impact is going to be storm related wind gusts. In other words, when one of those little cells grows in strength, it's going to be really, really gusty and uh, likely some small, maybe moderate hail. And we do have a increased flood potential in the sense that these storms aren't going to have a ton of water associated with them, but when they decide to rain, they're going to rain very hard and that could cause some flooding. Okay, so What's helping to kind of give us the energy for the first half of the day here is going to be some warmer air that's going to be moving through the state. That's going to give us a little bit of energy to kick off some of those showers, thunderstorms. What you just saw in the Doppler, that's going to continue to pass through. Then later this afternoon and evening, cold front's going to move into the state. That's going to take that warm, moist air, force it to rise, kicking off some stronger, isolated uh, showers and thunderstorms as the afternoon and evening plays out. Then following that much cooler air, we're going to see that and feel that tonight. 54 in Great Falls, 53 in the capital. Still staying a little bit more mild there into eastern Montana. Tomorrow, it is going to be much cooler across the board. We're also going to get windy. So with that wind, there's going to be a pretty heightened fire danger here tomorrow. So in anticipation of that, National Weather Service has a uh, fire weather watch that's going to go into effect tomorrow afternoon for all the highlighted regions there. And here's the variables we're dealing with. Temperature, not really a big factor. Low 80s, couple 70s in there. But we do have the dry air. We do have gusty winds tomorrow and of course the vegetation very dry out there as well. But temperature wise, check it out 79 tomorrow. So pretty darn mild compared to where we've been 80 degrees in the capital. A little bit warmer there throughout the eastern plains. And as Saturday rolls around 82 in Great Falls, 83 there in Great uh, in the capital, excuse me, and still touching into a couple of high 80s and 90s there throughout the eastern plains. So overall, a much cooler weather trend, and that's all due to that big area of low pressure, the driving force behind today's systems, allowing for some of that cooler air to continue settling in across the state. We'll likely see a little bit of a rebound in temperatures by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, though. Here's how it all comes together for us. Great Falls today, 91 scattered showers, thunderstorms, and uh, plenty of sunshine to go through the weekend, just a little bit on the cool side, then rebounding the temperatures by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. 88 today in the capital, low 80s through the weekend, and finally rebounding back up to about seasonable average there by Tuesday, which would be about 88 degrees and Fort Benton. 93 degrees today, low 80s through the weekend, couple of clouds, but overall getting hot again next week. Shannon. Jason, thank you. It is 551. Still to come on Montana this morning, how some penguin poop is helping out scientists. We'll explain next. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Welcome back. We are seven minutes away from six o'clock. The time now is 553 on this Thursday morning and scientists just found 11 new colonies of emperor penguins in the Antarctic. Special satellite images revealed the colonies by showing scientists piles of guano <laughs> or penguin poop. Experts now know of 61 emperor penguin colonies comprised of about half a million penguins. Since the penguins live and breed in such remote areas, researchers say those satellite images will allow them to monitor and study the populations. Always amazes me what you can find on satellite imagery. Poop. Mm -hmm. Poop now? You got smoke in there, you got reflective, <laughs> I mean, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. It's amazing. Pretty, I mean, that's pretty impressive, though. Like, 
What is that down there? I mean, it makes oh. sense because like, you know, getting all nerdy here, like you're looking for the, al like basically satellite, depending on the satellite, I guess this is a very loaded topic. I'm going to try to keep this as simple, but certain satellites that you're just looking at, like the albedo, the, the reflection of uh -huh. something. So that would make sense that, you know, no matter the satellite, uh, unless, <laughs> unless it's infrared, and then you're looking at the heat, which could they, also work for if they this, had a taco bar the night before. I yeah. mean, then infrared satellite imagery might be good to find the penguin. Qu <laughs> Quano. As long as it's fresh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. It's so depending cold on there. the time and day. Yeah, exactly. But uh, that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> OK, anyways, that's pretty good. Uh, so <laughs> I want to see pictures of the penguins themselves, though. Yeah, I'll right. Hope at some yeah. point. Classy yeah. little guys walking around in little tuxedos there. All, All right. Nice. Currently in Great Falls on the US Bank ICAM 50 degrees here. Little tiny breeze today, but it's going to be pretty minimal out of the south, three miles per hour. As for the capital, currently on the Opportunity Bank ICAM, sitting at 59 degrees. Some wind out of the north, three miles per hour right now. Pretty darn mild, 60% humidity, tracking an increased potential for some stronger storms in the highlighted region there. Uh, some thunderstorm related wind gusts, some hail possible. Also could see a quick little downpour here or there. So the threats today, we're looking again, really wind being the main one. And uh, it's not going to be like widespread wind. It's going to be wind related to those storms. And uh, flooding would be another one to kind of keep an eye out for there. So overall, 91 degrees in Great Falls, 88 in the capital. Mid 90s for Glasgow and 89 in Cup Bank. All right, don't go away. Your Farm and Ranch Report with the Montana Ag Network is next. Coming up on Montana this morning, season canceled an update to the Helena Farmers Market. Plus, we'll hear from teachers who have started and ended their careers during coronavirus. And later, cheering for little Liam. A Montana boy fights for his life. We'll have an update. Montana This Morning starts now. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Thursday, August 6th. I'm Shannon New. And I'm Jason Laird. Well, kind of an active day on tap today. Nothing too crazy. Almost a carbon copy of Monday. If you remember okay. Monday, we had those spotty storms in the morning and then kind of stronger uh, mm -hmm. in the afternoon and evening. Very similar. That's what's on store. That's, That's what's, what's in, in store yep. for today. All That's right. right. All right. Sounds As you're good. waking up this morning, here's what we're looking at on the uh, U.S. Bank ICAM in Great Falls. 60 degrees right now. Humidity sitting at 57, so not a bad start to the day. Pretty clear skies, but we will see some of those spotty storms for the first half of the day here. As for the capital, looking at 58 degrees. Humidity sitting at 62. Calm winds right now. And Fort Benton downtown looking nice as always there. 61 degrees. Humidity a little bit higher there along the river at 68. All right, today's fire variables pretty minimal. Again, doesn't mean that a fire can't kick off. Now tomorrow, different story. We're going to get a little bit windy tomorrow, which is really going to increase that fire danger. So cold front today is going to help to kick off some isolated showers and thunderstorms a little bit on the stronger side later this afternoon. More wind tomorrow, increasing the fire danger and uh, temperatures are pretty much trending below average through the weekend. Pretty mild August so far. We'll take a little bit closer look at some of these passing storms today and let you know just how we'll call it chilly. The weekend is going to turn out to be all those details coming up very shortly. Shannon. OK, Jason, thank you. Time now is 603. We're checking in now on Montana's COVID-19 numbers. The state reported 115 new cases since Tuesday. Phillips County has now seen its first cases of coronavirus with five. That means masks are now mandatory there. There has also been another COVID related death in Yellowstone County. That brings our statewide total to 66. There are currently more than 1500 active cases and 79 Montanans are hospitalized. Nearly 2900 people have recovered so far. The Helena Farmers Market has been officially canceled for this season. Following the revocation of the market's COVID-19 prevention plan and street permit, the market's board and Lewis and Clark Public Health tried to find a way to keep the market running while still abiding by the county's guidelines. Helena Farmers Market Board President Wayne O'Brien said the organization didn't feel like they had the ability to carry out a plan under the guidelines. When we finally, I think, got to a point where we thought we could put something together that would work, we realized that we just did not have the manpower or the capability and real difficult for us to deal with trying to have a farmer's market where you're limited to 250 people for the entire day that you hold the market. It just didn't seem feasible for us at that stage of the game to move forward. 
Lewis and Clark Public Health called the decision to cancel the market heartbreaking. In a statement, they said, quote, we had hoped for an amended plan that would allow community members access to the wonderful local products our vendors have to offer in a safe environment, protect it from the virus that causes COVID-19, end quote. During the first few weeks of the pandemic, the Salvation Army of Great Falls was helping their weekly quota of households in a single day. Now that unemployment benefits have been cut, the Salvation Army expects general need to surge once again. This increase means the nonprofit will depend on the community even more over the next few months as they work to meet the needs of struggling community members. Monetary donations, food drop-offs, and time spent volunteering can help the Salvation Army help others. Corps Officer Monica King explains that while the organization expects needs to increase, the staff hasn't had time to prepare for the expected demand in supplies and resources. We really haven't been able to prepare ahead, really. It's just, um, it, we will continue to provide the services we've always provided until uh, those resources run dry, basically. As the Salvation Army gears up for another busy season, they ask that the community keep their, their needs in mind. And if you'd like to donate or are in need of aid, you can find more information on our website. Well, Great Falls Public Schools are ramping up for an unprecedented fall semester. Despite the pandemic, 51 new teachers are slated to start this fall in the district. MTN Zach Shermley checked in with a few to see how they're feeling. The clock is ticking for the start of the school year here in the Electric City, with teachers still reeling from the fallout of last spring's online-only semester. Last year, there was nothing really I could contribute once they called off school. Paul Jefferson, an in-school suspension tutor at Great Falls High, resigned ahead of the upcoming school year. So much of what I do is my um, connections with the kids, and none of that was going to be possible. I have been teaching at Great Falls High for 31 years, and now it's a pandemic. Also last semester, retirements from longtime Great Falls High teachers Christina Thiel and Jan Mater. 43 years ago, I came to Great Falls. Despite the pandemic, district officials tell MTN the turnover is largely on par with any other year. This year's passing of the torch comes with much more uncertainty, especially for special education teachers like Holly Johnson, who will be at Valley View Elementary this fall. It's an unsure time. Um, we're all going through unsure times with this whole pandemic. As a special ed teacher, um, our classrooms look a lot different. 22 teachers retired from the Great Falls Public School District last semester, passing the baton to Holly here at Valley View Elementary, along with 50 other new hires for the district. Despite the uncertainty, many new educators tell me they have no other choice but to remain optimistic. All of us are doing the best we can. <laughs> so we'll keep things clean and sanitized to keep everybody healthy and especially as health enhancement, that's, that's our goal. Health enhancement teacher Molly Harding says she's thankful for the level of communication from the district. GFPS has done a really awesome job with preparing us for everything and they've been so great about telling us information and making us feel like we're included in everything. In July, the district released a draft plan for a mix of face-to-face -face and remote instruction in the fall, with protections for immunocompromised students and staff members. Regardless of what next school year brings, Holly says she and her students are in this together. Honestly, the thing that gets me to the next day and that makes my attitude still positive is that just being with my students, just having that one-to-one um, -one, um, contact with my students is what is keeping me going. In Great Falls, Zach Shermley, MTN News. It is 6.08 now on your Thursday. Coming up on Montana This Morning, holding on to hope. One family's fight for life. And later in your weather forecast, we are tracking some scattered showers and thunderstorms before noon and then maybe a little bit more widespread this afternoon, all due to an incoming area of low pressure. Really the biggest impact of this area of low pressure is we're going to see a lot cooler temperatures through the weekend, likely even falling below average, maybe warming up next week. We'll tell you about it shortly. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. It's another great start to the day here in Montana. You're looking live over the capital city of Helena this morning. It is Thursday, August 6th. We're so glad to have you along. Time now, 6-11. 
Well, Ty McDonald has been known as a tough Montana State football player and cowboy growing up on a ranch in the Geyser area. But he says he doesn't come close to as strong as his baby boy fighting for his life in Denver as we speak. MTN's Jenny Fick shares the story of Liam McDonald. Smiling. Oh my goodness. This is Liam. You having a hey. good day. Liam translates to strong-willed warrior, and it turns out that couldn't be more true. He was born with a serious heart defect and underwent his first open heart surgery at five days old. Three open heart surgeries, two other surgeries, cath lab procedures that all require anesthesia and to still be able to smile at his mom and dad is pretty darn cool. His eyes just tell a story and he looks at you and it just like hits your soul. Following his second stage of heart surgery in March, he was put on ECMO or life support. The doctors have said that there's no more that can be done for him, but his parents have not and will not give up hope. Not every institution does specialize in pediatrics. I mean, you're, you're talking about a heart that's, you know, when he was born, it was the size of a walnut. Sometimes a different perspective helps. Ty made a post on Facebook, reaching out for a miracle. At this point, the post has been shared around 16,000 times. Our need is to get our information out to uh, cardiology, expertise folks who are in those fields uh, all across the country. A cardiac surgeon, a heart transplant team, a kidney transplant team, a pediatric surgeon. You will need a heart transplant and down the road a kidney transplant. But before any of that can happen, they have to get on the transplant list. This whole thing would be one thing if he wasn't there neurologically, if you know he didn't respond to us every day. But he does every day and he smiles at us every day. In my eyes, you have one choice, and that choice is to continue to grind. There's only one way to eat an elephant, and it's one bite at a time. I think every parent has a gut feeling on how their kid is doing or not, especially mama. Uh, mama knows he's still fighting, and he's fighting for us, and he's fighting for his sister. In short, he's the toughest cowboy I know. Someone that has the big guns that can offer him a life, because he's so full of life, and giving up on him is just... It's not a choice. It's not an option. We won't do it. Did you ever know you could love someone so much? I didn't until I had Kimber. You kind of get that, oh my God, I didn't know. And then you have him and it's like just the thought of losing him just tears you apart. Like you do anything like I'd give him my heart if it would fit in his chest. If they will give him a heart, I will give him a kidney. I'm the best match for him and I will give one to him if they will give him a heart. Jenny Fick for MTN News. And little Liam just turned eight months old. Well, up next in your weather forecast, today's fire danger not crazy high. The biggest thing we're not dealing with is wind. You'll notice today it is going to get hot despite a couple of passing showers and thunderstorms. Humidity levels pretty low, but again, wind not a factor. As for the capital here today, getting pretty hot as well. Low humidity levels, pretty significant cool down. But even with that cool down, we are tracking a heightened fire danger tomorrow on Friday. I'll tell you why and break down this incoming system next. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Jason Laird. Good morning, everyone. Already seeing a little bit of moisture spill into southwestern Montana. That's kind of the leading edge of a batch of actually warmer air that's going to move through earlier in the day, helping to kick off some of those early showers and thunderstorms. 59 in Great Falls and the capital right now, still well into the 60s throughout the eastern plains. Before those storms start to roll in, and even with some rolling storms, we're still going to get up to 91 in Great Falls, 88 in the capital, staying cooler in southwestern Montana, and flirting with the triple digits once again throughout the eastern plains. With those passing storms today, National Weather Service has increased the severe weather threat slightly today. Nothing too crazy. Isolated storms expected. The biggest impact with these passing storms is going to be thunderstorm related wind gusts. In other words, those cells kind of getting a little bit gusty around them. Some hail possible and an occasional downpour or two. Not a ton of moisture to work with, but when those storms decide to rain, it will likely be quick and pretty heavy, leading to some localized flooding. Uh, not out of the question there. All right, so there's that one warm front that's going to move through. Future tracks not showing a ton of moisture, but there is going to be that possibility of very similar to last Monday. Some spotty storms kind of earlier in the day. Then later this afternoon, cold front's going to start moving in. So we'll start to see this evening those showers and thunderstorms kicking up into southwestern Montana, traveling through central Montana here this evening as well. Following that, quite a bit cooler air. We're going to feel those cooler temperatures even tonight already. 54 in Great Falls this evening. 
53 in the capital, mid 40s down into southwestern Montana. Cold front not quite making its way all the way through the eastern plains until tomorrow, so overnight lows staying uh, more into the 60s in that region. Tomorrow it is going to be pretty cool compared to where we've been, and the other big impact tomorrow is a pretty substantial rise in the wind. We'll likely see wind gusts at about 30 miles per hour, so with the increase in wind, low humidity levels, fire weather watch has been put into effect for pretty much all of north central and central Montana for tomorrow. That again will go into effect tomorrow, taking us through about 9 p.m. Very well could get bumped up to a warning. So the fire variables we're dealing with tomorrow. Temperature is not a huge factor. It's still going to be, you know, low uh, mid 70s to high 70s and some early 80s, but dry air will be a factor. Wind gusts again. And of course, the vegetation out there rather dry. We'll see temperatures across the board here tomorrow. Much cooler, 79 in Gray Falls, 80 degrees in the capital, staying in the mid 80s throughout the eastern plains. And then on Saturday, pretty much a carbon copy, a little bit warmer though throughout the eastern plains. Here's how that's all going to come together for you over the next couple of days. 91 degrees here today. Showers and thunderstorms primarily this evening with those stronger storms. We'll see plenty of sunshine, clear skies, but cooler through the weekend. Looking at the low 80s, high 70s. High pressure is going to rebuild a little bit, taking temperatures to more average by Tuesday, Wednesday of this next week. As for the capital, 88 degrees today, 80 degrees then uh, tomorrow through the weekend, and a little bit warmer by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. And in Cut Bank, 89 degrees here today, looking at the 70s actually taking us through the weekend. More average temperatures though by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, Shannon. All right, Jason, thank you. It's 621 still to come on Montana this morning. We're celebrating some birthdays and anniversaries. Don't go away. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Good morning to you. Welcome back. Time now is 626. We're glad to have you with us. We're celebrating some birthdays and anniversaries. It's a good day to have a birthday. Yeah, Shannon's big B day today. Hey. But to kick things off here, let's start uh, with Richard Parento. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday from your brother. And also Cassie Schmidt. Happy birthday. Love mom and dad. And we want to wish happy anniversary today to two couples. First Dale and Cindy Doan celebrating 43 years together. Happy anniversary to you. And John and Mary Crow. Happy 60th anniversary to to my hubby John. It's been interesting and eventful <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be saying that I was going to say make that it to 60. Uh, lots of love always. So happy anniversary to John and Mary Crow. Right. And awesome. as we mentioned, it is Shannon's birthday today. Uh, yeah. I did not sign her up for AARP. I was thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that would break, be fantastic. He was like, oh, I should have signed you up for a subscription. I, <laughs> 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 but we do have a very special birthday wish for you today. Oh. All right. Let's go ahead and roll does, that for you. What does that mean? Hey Shannon, Jeff the Nature Guy here at Zoo Montana and Winston the Sloth here oh. would like to wish you a happy birthday. Hey, by the way, he is very excited to meet you in person real soon. So oh with that, gosh. as you just heard, Shannon has I'm like been... tearing up from excitement. Oh my God. So <laughs> Shannon clearly is very obsessed with sloths and yeah. we've been following the story of Winston coming to Billings. Yeah. And so I know Jeff E. Walt from when I worked in Billings and I sent him a message. And as part of that, uh -huh. you get to meet Winston. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you get a, well, well, we don't have a definitive date yet, but when we make oh it back gosh. down to Billings, you're okay. going to get a meet Winston. Well, we'll share, we'll share that video with you. That's so exciting. Yeah. <gasps> I hope Winston likes me. So that's, that's part of, I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like, happy birthday bites me. Yeah, no kidding, right? Or no, he or something. He'll, so he'll again, big like, thanks oh to Jeff gosh. though for, for helping me out there as well. But uh, yeah, so next time we're down in Billings, we're going to cruise by Zoo Montana and you're going to meet good Winston. Surprise. Oh my gosh. All right. Well. That took Thank up my you. Final, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> that took up my final weather time. Okay. So we're going to be back with more weather and news coming up very shortly. Hang tight. Coming up this half hour, we'll look at some projects moving forward in downtown Great Falls. Plus, the census announces it's wrapping up counting efforts early, what this could mean for Montana. And later, revitalizing history will take you to a barn getting a facelift in Sun River. Montana This Morning starts now. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. 
Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us here on Montana this morning. I'm still trying to compose <laughs> myself after just getting surprised with yeah. that. Get to meet Winston the Sloth and so Billings exciting. on our next trip down. And I got there, a special so. happy birthday message from him too. Yeah, so I was, when I was talking to Jeff or whatever, if you've never seen it, the Kristen Bell video when yeah. her husband uh, Dad, arranged Shepherd. it yeah. to get allow her to meet a sloth. Oh she just gosh. starts crying just starts and crying. losing it. Like I teared up. I was just like, oh, that's so sweet. I know and it wasn't quite to that standard. But no, I'm not that. to the same like extent that Kristen Bell is as far as like so excited. But oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so cool. We'll, Definitely we'll get a big video surprise. of that. Don't worry on yeah. one of our many weekend adventures. <laughs> Probably in September weeping, sometime we'll make it down Winston. there. So. Yeah, That's well, we've been exciting. following his story. You know, we have. His eight-month journey. His forever <laughs> journey to get to Billings, right. yeah. Well, on the okay. weather scene here, bright and early this morning, waking up to a pretty nice one across the board. 60 degrees right now. We will see some spotty showers and thunderstorms around the area. Uh, first half of the day here, a little bit better chance than this afternoon as a cold front drops through the state. 58 degrees on the Opportunity Bank ICAM in the capital. And currently in Geyser, we're looking at 58 degrees. Humidity looking at 62% percent fishing forecast over the next couple of days here. Low 90s, a uh, little bit of wind out there and then again some showers, thunderstorms today. Really Friday just staying windy and then a little bit cooler as we head through the weekend. We'll talk about this incoming system and how cool those weekend temperatures are expected to be coming up shortly. Shannon. Jason, thank you. Time now is 632. Development might be stagnant for stagnant for some places during COVID-19, but the future is bright. MTN's Tom Wiley has more on projects that are moving forward and what they could mean for downtown Great Falls growth. Though the global pandemic has led to an economic downturn, there was reason for optimism at Tuesday night's city commission meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. And a thank you on behalf of the city of Great Falls for the risk takers that are in the audience tonight. The commissioners unanimously approved tax abatements for three local projects currently in development. I really believe in tax abatements. It's an investment in Great Falls growth. And I think we're really sending the good message that the city will participate with growth even during times like this. The first is a proposed complex attached to the Milwaukee station that would add 83 market rate apartments, a wine bar, a food court with four to five restaurants and a possible gym. The second is a project called the Northern Lofts, which would renovate the second and third floor of the 412 Central Avenue building above the Mighty Mo Brewery into 18 one and two bedroom apartments. And the third is a multi-purpose entertainment venue with a large stage, a bar and lounge and a capacity of 700 occupants going into the vacant units next to Central Avenue meets. All these projects are in various stages of planning with plenty of hurdles to clear before they become a reality. But the first hurdle is out of the way with city supports and that bodes well for the future of Great Falls development. We've been working on downtown revitalization for a number of years now. And these three projects are really the fruition of years of effort to attract high quality private investment. These projects are, are very important for the future of downtown, but they also demonstrate private investor confidence in, in the future of Great Falls and the entire economy of the Golden Triangle. Tom Wiley, MTN News. Getting a check now of Montana's COVID-19 numbers. The state reported 115 new cases since Tuesday. Phillips County has seen its first cases of coronavirus with five. That means masks are now mandatory in that county. There's also been another COVID related death in Yellowstone County. That brings the statewide death toll to 66. And there are currently more than 1500 active cases and 79 Montanans are hospitalized. Nearly 2900 people have recovered so far. In Billings, the Montana Fair gets underway today. The Mighty Thomas Carnival is at about 60% to allow for spacing under COVID-19 guidelines. Crews worked on the last parts of setting up for the fair. 4-H and FFA will be held in the Expo Center and the first interstate arena. Entertainment will be on the Lake Stage and at the Exchange Club patio. And do the things, the right things to protect each other. We wanted to provide an environment that was economically intelligent for the Mighty Thomas Carnival and for Montana Fair as well. And so we're about 60% of our normal size. Yeah, it gave us courage and confidence in what we're doing, that we're doing the right things, that we're able to properly distance people, that people will pay attention and do the things, the right things to protect each other and have fun doing so. And we were really happy with the way everything went during Sneak Abuse. 
Montana Fair will be 10 days this year. Again, that starts today in Billings and goes through Saturday, August 15th. With the added threat of coronavirus, health officials are pushing Americans to get their flu shot early this year. Flu shots will start being available at doctor's offices, pharmacies and supermarkets by early next month. Health experts also say it's a good idea to get it early because there may be some added obstacles this year. People who usually get the shot at the office may be working from home and those who get it from the doctor may have a longer wait time for an appointment. Earlier this year, the earlier this week, rather, the U.S. Census Bureau announced it will stop its counting efforts for the 2020 census on September 30th, a month earlier than originally planned. As MTN's Mike Dennison explains, thousands of Montanans are likely to go unaccounted for and state officials are asking the feds to reconsider the deadline. As of this week, only 56 percent of Montana households had responded to the 2020 census, one of the lowest response rates in the nation. Montana has a plan to reach those who haven't replied, but that plan was based on an October 31st deadline. If that deadline is sooner, state officials are worried Montana's count will be inaccurately low, and that means federal aid and other benefits will be cut short for the next decade. It is very important uh, that we get an accurate count because if we don't get an accurate count, that just means those dollars aren't going to come here and it's going to go someplace else to some other state. The Census Bureau announced Monday it's stopping the count on September 30th, so it can meet a December 31st deadline for getting the numbers compiled. Both of Montana's U.S. Senators and Governor Bullock have demanded that the Bureau reverse its decision. Montana also had hoped to gain a new congressional seat next year because of its population growth the past 10 years. But if the count is incomplete, officials say that gain is unlikely. Cooney, who chairs the state Complete Count Committee, says the census doesn't mail notices to post office boxes or rural route addresses. That's as many as 25 percent of Montanans. But the coronavirus pandemic has restricted other efforts to reach those who didn't get a mailed notice. The state hired several groups to conduct outreach, but they expected to have more time. And if people don't contact the census by the deadline? They're not counted. Huh? It's just that simple. We just, they don't exist in the eyes of the census. It means that, you know, if one person is not counted, Montana loses about $20,000 over a 10 year period. And when you start adding that up, so if it's 10 people, 20 people, 100 people, 1,000 people who don't get counted, it starts to add up to be real money for the state of Montana. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. It's 6.38 now on your Thursday. Coming up on Montana This Morning, it's peak season for a popular summer treat. We'll check in on Flathead Cherries. And later in your weather forecast, the fire danger not too bad today. Tomorrow, however, it's definitely going to increase. This particular map is looking at humidity level, wind and temperature, and you'll notice uh, pretty high fire danger into north central Montana. Fire weather watch going into effect tomorrow as well. We'll talk more about that and some thunderstorms in the mix coming up shortly. Welcome back. A live look over Great Falls this morning on this Thursday. Beautiful sunny start to the day. It is August 6th. Time now is 640. Thanks for joining us. Popular Flathead Lake cherries are currently in peak harvest, being sold locally in grocery stores while also being shipped across the world. MTN's Sean Wells has an update on one of Montana's sweetest summertime exports in this morning's Montana Ag Network report. I think a lot of the market this year is domestic because there's just a big demand for cherries. But there's overseas markets. A lot of, a lot of Northwest cherries, which we are considered part of, are sold in Asia and Europe and, um, yeah, all over the world. Munson Fruit Field representative Brian Campbell expects roughly 1.2 million pounds of Flathead Lake cherries to be harvested this season. The Cherry Grower Cooperative manages 80 Flathead orchards, roughly 500 acres of cherries. Campbell says the crop is roughly 60% of last year's haul, which brought in 2 million pounds. Despite the low crop outlook, Campbell says this year's fruit is in excellent condition. Campbell says long summer days and cool nights, along with a smaller than normal crop, seem to be the perfect recipe for this season's cherries. With smaller volumes, we're able to time our picking a little bit better, and so we're getting, you know, picking it right at its prime. 
We don't have to rush and try to get a bigger crop off. Flathead Lake Cherry Farmer and Co-op Board Member Mark St. Sauber says orchards are taking extra precautions this season due to the coronavirus pandemic. Free testing sites have been set up for cherry workers along with social distancing protocols. We've been taking their temperature every morning and asking them if they are, you know, having any of the symptoms of the coronavirus. Um, so far we've had no issues. The Flathead Lake Cherry Growers Warehouse on Finley Point is where Monson Fruit Company receives the cherries and hydrocools the fruit down to 34 degrees. The fruit is then stored in a cooler before it is shipped out within hours to their packing facility in Sela, Washington. Campbell says one perk on the job is being the official cherry taste tester, helping determine when cherries are ready to be picked. I don't know how many I eat in a day, but that's a good indication of their ripeness and their quality is that taste test. So I taste a lot of cherries. Campbell said harvest started on July 25th and is expected to run through August 12th. In Pulse and Sean Wells, MTN News. Well, coronavirus could have cost the Great Falls Municipal Band its 127 year tradition of summer shows, but the band's leading members wouldn't let their season end on a bad note. So this summer, while the Municipal Band performances might look a little different than years past, the show will go on as it always has. The summer's performances were broken up into smaller acts of four or so musicians to ensure that band members were able to socially distance from one another. Audience members also adhered to these guidelines by sitting apart from other groups and wearing masks during the concert. While this setup is certainly a first for the group, longtime member Phil Burton says it's been a positive change for musicians and audience members alike. When you hear a big band, you don't always hear the piccolos playing all the time or the flutes playing all the time. And with these small ensembles, you get to hear them and them alone. And it's really good for the musicians because, you know, a lot of them, like myself, maybe lack some confidence on certain pieces and there's safety in numbers. Well, when you're up there with two or three others, you're not very safe. So you got to practice and work and make yourself get better. The band will perform their last concert of the summer at Gibson Park next Wednesday night at 7. Well, a barn in Sun River is getting a facelift, but it's not just any barn. MTN's Isaiah Dunk takes us there. The J.C. Adams Stone Barn has been a staple in the Sun River Valley for quite a while. Local rancher J.C. Adams had it completed in 1885, so it's actually older than the state of Montana. With its large size and Romanesque revival architecture, it's said to be the only barn of its kind west of the Mississippi River. He built the barn mainly to provide horses and cattle to Fort Shaw, which was going strong at that point in time. He came from Kentucky. Uh, that's part of the reason why he built such a beautiful big old barn. I noticed the barn almost the first time I drove by it. It just jumps out at you. The barn fell out of private use in 1979, and it's been registered as a national historic place since then. Over the last four decades, it's seen numerous restoration efforts, and this week, the most recent one is finishing up. A $10,000 grant from the Montana History Foundation has helped with new red paint for all the wooden surfaces, plus restored window panes and other work. It's been wonderful, actually. Um, overwhelming in the sense that, you know, planning the, the weather, the subcontractors, the supplies, everything's kind of late coming in, but it all came together, so it went really smooth, actually. And in its heyday, the barn even held roller skate parties and dances for Valley locals up in the hayloft. Its unique size, location, and style make it worth every effort. The alternative is it not being here any longer, and you know, as it deteriorates, it's just kind of an eyesore. So, um, you know, raising the money to make this happen, and or getting a grant to do it is just so important for everybody in in this area, as well as the families that live here. Neat history and a lot of fun memories for everybody. In Sun River, Isaiah Dunk, MTN News. Well, up next in your weather forecast, we're looking at pretty decent air qualities to start the day out, despite some active fires throughout the region. Uh, trending very good right now across the board. As for burn restrictions, we've had a couple added into western Montana and still looking at a couple of stage one burn restrictions into south central Montana. Just something to keep in the back of your mind if you do have plans to hit the hills this weekend for a little bit of recreating. More on your forecast, talking about some passing storms here today in a cooler weekend. Your forecast is next. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Jason Laird. 
Good morning, everyone. Hopefully your day's off to a great start looking at 59 degrees in both Great Falls and the capital to start things out and a couple of 60s still. You'll notice a couple of storms already starting to kick up into southwestern Montana. A couple little cells there along the high line as well. The reason behind that we've got a couple weather systems moving through today. I'll show you momentarily, but despite those passing systems, we're still going to be hot today. 91 in Great Falls, 88 in the capital, looking at the high 90s throughout the eastern plains as well. Bit of a toasty one with those storm systems passing through today a little bit of a heightened uh, concern when it comes to severe weather. The biggest impact is going to be thunderstorm related wind gusts. In other words, uh, the winds coming out of those storms rather strong hail potential there as well and a little bit of heavy rain associated with some of these cells. They're not going to rain a ton, but again, they're going to kind of hold that rain dump it all at once, which could potentially kind of cause some localized flooding. So here's how the day is going to play out here for us. That warmer air mass is what's kind of helping kick off the energy this morning. So almost a carbon copy of what we saw on Monday, some isolated spotty showers, thunderstorms first half of the day, and then a cold front is going to move in later in the day here into the evening. That's going to help to kick off some stronger storms this evening, most of which are going to be in central Montana and then track up toward the high line and then behind that cold front quite a bit cooler air. So we'll see overnight lows in the mid 50s, mid to low 50s for central Montana. Still a little bit more mild though in northeastern Montana as that cold front is going to kind of take its time making its way into that portion of the state. So much cooler temperatures on tap for Friday. However, with that passing system, we're also going to see a pretty decent increase in the wind. So with more wind, even though the temperatures are backing off, we are going to see a heightened fire danger tomorrow. A fire weather watch going into effect Friday afternoon, taking us through Friday evening. And uh, again, that tells us that the conditions are right to uh, have a fire spread or kick off pretty darn easily for us. So as for the variables that we're looking at tomorrow, temperatures not a huge factor looking at the low 80s, even some high 70s in the mix, but we do have the dry air. The big one is the wind. We're going to have an increase in wind, likely going to see wind gusts around 30 miles per hour tomorrow, and then a lot of dry vegetation throughout the state as well. So tomorrow following today's systems, we're only going to hit 79 in Gray Falls. Little break from the heat there. 80 degrees in the capital, still trending in the mid to low 80s throughout the eastern plains. As for temperatures then on Saturday, still staying uh, below seasonable averages, 82 degrees in Great Falls, 83 in the capital, with a couple of 90s returning there throughout the eastern plains. So what we've got going on through the weekend here, that main driving force is going to continue to allow for cooler air to settle into the state. By next week, uh, probably Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to start to see a little bit of high pressure rebuild, and that is going to get us back up to seasonable average temperatures, mid to high 80s for most of central Montana. So today, 91 scattered showers and thunderstorms. Pretty clear through the weekend, but definitely cooler compared to where we've uh, been than warming up finally by Wednesday of next week. 88 degrees today in the capital, low 80s through the weekend, back to the average temperatures by Tuesday, Shannon. Jason, thank you. It is 652. Stocks rose sharply Wednesday. The Dow soared 373 points. The Nasdaq gained 57 for another record close. The S&P 500 added 21. Gold is one of the few assets outperforming the Nasdaq of late. This year, its value has surged by more than 30 percent. An ounce of gold is now trading at an all-time high, $2,054. Experts believe gold prices will continue to climb for some time. Coming up, we talk with White House advisor Peter Navarro about the stalled relief bill and what President Trump is considering to help struggling Americans, plus a grassroots movement to feed the hungry with free food from sidewalk fridges. Coming up on CBS This Morning. Welcome back. Thanks for starting your day with us. Let's get you out the door with a few of the top stories on this Thursday, August 6th, 2020. Checking Montana's COVID-19 numbers, the state reported 115 new cases since Tuesday. Phillips County has seen its first cases of coronavirus with five, meaning masks are now mandatory in the county. There has also been another COVID-related death in Yellowstone County. That brings the statewide total of deaths related to COVID to 66. There are currently more than 1,500 active cases and 79 Montanans are hospitalized. Nearly 2,900 people have recovered so far.
The Helena Farmers Market is officially canceled for the season. That's following revocation of the market's COVID-19 prevention plan and street permit. The market's board and Lewis and Clark Public Health tried to find a way to keep the market running while still abiding by the county guidelines. Helena Farmers Market Board President Wayne O'Brien said the organization just didn't feel like they had the ability to carry out a plan under those guidelines. Dozens of salmonella cases have popped up across Montana. 16 counties reporting cases, including in Cascade, Hill, Fergus, and Lewis and Clark. It's linked to recalled onions. The onions are from Thompson International from California. The company issued a voluntary recall August 1st because they may be contaminated with salmonella. Most people with an infection start feeling sick six hours to six days after eating or drinking something that contains the bacteria. They typically recover without needing treatment within four to seven seven days. And this morning, people in Great Falls looking for work can apply for jobs without getting out of their vehicle. Express Employment Professionals is hosting a drive through job fair. That agency is looking to fill 30 full and part-time jobs for companies in Great Falls. Wages range from $12 to $25 an hour. That drive through job fair is today, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the parking lot of Express Employment Professionals. And a quick reminder, don't forget to tune in Saturday night, 9 p.m. here on MTN as Steve Daines and Steve Bullock meet for their first U.S. Senate debate. And as you're heading out the door here today, do kind of keep an eye to the sky. Slightly more active day on tap. Looking good though right now, but you'll notice a couple of clouds there building into the capital. Almost a carbon copy of Monday where we'll see some very spotty isolated showers, maybe a thunderstorm or two first half of the day. And then things are going to get a little bit more active later this evening as a cold front drops into the state. So really the biggest threats with the storms today, uh, wind related or excuse me, Thunderstorm related wind gusts <laughs> okay. that makes a little more sense. Some hail not out of the question and then an occasional heavy downpour or two as those storms kind of track overhead, but really pretty isolated. You'll notice here's kind of the best potential for those stronger storms today is the area highlighted in yellow. So we've got some warmer air moving through this morning. That's kind of providing a little bit of instability to kick things off here early in the day, but really that cold front here that starts moving in this evening. That's going to be the system that helps to kick off some stronger isolated uh, showers and thunderstorms into central Montana tracking into northeastern Montana. Much cooler temperatures following that system, but we're definitely going to ramp up the fire danger tomorrow because following that cold front, not only is it going to be cooler, it's also going to be windy. So scattered showers, thunderstorms for Great Falls in the capital today, 90, 91 in Great Falls, 88 in the capital, mid 90s in northeastern Montana and uh, Pretty hot there in Cutbank today as well before those systems kind of cool us off just in time for the weekend. All right. Well, thanks for making us a part of your day and thank you for my yeah. sloth surprise. Big birthday girl Happy here. birthday from Winston the sloth. <laughs> so excited to meet him. Yeah. Definitely very surprised. Thank you. All right. Well, our news doesn't stop here. Of course, get coverage throughout the day on our social media apps and website. And of course, we've got a couple of updates headed your way here bright and early this morning. If we miss you there, we'll see you bright and early tomorrow. Have a great day.